Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dad, as ever, I'm the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode in my Microsoft Cloud VDI series. Um, we are the, the, the final episode of the DevBox topic today. So this whole series includes DevBox, Windows 365 and AVD, Azure Virtual Desktop. So today's the final episode, we're going to talk, we've done a lot, of, we've basically completed a whole list of demos, we've talked about all the different concepts, architecture, um, use cases as well. Um, so I wanted to round that off by talking about some roadmap items um, for DevBox. Let's get started with this episode. So this is the Microsoft uh, Cloud VDI series, as I mentioned. Uh, in today, uh, specifically, we're going we're gonna to talk about the Microsoft DevBox roadmap. So there's three sort of items in there, um, which is a ready to code uh, development environment roadmap, uh, enterprise management roadmap, and the fundamental performance and reliability roadmap, and, and what, what's coming up for Microsoft DevBox, okay? Um, so let's talk about ready to code development environment first. So Microsoft DevBox can significantly develop, can enhance developer productivity by, by minimizing configuration time and IT overhead. As we know, you know, compared to traditional virtual desktop infrastructure, VDI solutions like AVD, um, and even Windows 365. So Microsoft are making it incredibly easy and quick for developers to create ready to code environments that are tailored to their sort of specific projects. Not only are they reducing the time required to set up dev boxes, but they're also introducing you know, innovative new customization options for both sort of teams and individuals. So we've got this, Microsoft have this thing called uh, Config as Code Workflow and then some of the improvements that we're going to see in, in, in the upcoming months and, and hopefully later on early next year. Uh, first of all, uh, team customizations, first of all. So this is as a project uh, lead or a dev center admin, um, you'll be able to set up sort of config as code DevBox configurations for, for an entire team, uh, allowing quicker on this allow quicker onboarding for, for developers without having them to sort of deal with onboarding complexities essentially. You then got um, what's called uh, dev center imaging as well. Um, so as a project lead again, or as a as dev center admin, this is going to allow you to tailor customizations in each team without losing out on the sort of dev box creation performance. Um, you're going to be able to optimize these sort of team customizations into an image without investing in sort of and maintaining your own sort of custom image, um, you know, for generation capabilities. You then have secrets and variables sort of on the roadmap. Again, as a project lead or dev center admin, um, you're going to be able to um, sort of saw secrets and subscriptions that are in different uh you know from from the one that your dev center's in and it's going to allow you to to reuse centralized secrets uh secret stores with sort of dev box um uh, dev boxes as well and then we've got native run as a user support for dev box customizations as well so these are very much around the customizations as we can see uh so again some of these sort of dev box customization tasks are required to be run as the signed in user so the native run as user support is going to provide that capability of executing customizations under the, the user context within sort of proved reliability, status tracking, and sort of error reporting. And finally, uh, the, the project policy. So as again, as a dev center admin, you're going to be able to set up guardrails around resources with different projects um, sh that, that should and shouldn't have access. Um, so continuing on that sort of ready to code uh, development environment. We've got some more sort of updates in, in the roadmap that are coming up. Um, first of all, we've got this enhanced user provided customizations. So first of all, the improved DevBox creation flow on, on the dev home that we saw on the developer portal. So as a developer, you'll be able to get started with DevBox customizations using the user interface uh, to choose repositories to, to clone or package and, or to install without having to author a YAML configuration by hand, which is going to save a lot of time. They've got native support for Winget and DSC as well, so all dev boxes will be able to use Winget and DSC to install packages and apply configurations without requiring a catalog to be attached. Uh, and then finally, on the ready to code development environment sort of um, roadmap, we've got the first time developer experience. So first of all, we've got the dev portal landing page and welcome tour. So some updates in the roadmap that are going to be as a developer, you're getting on board into dev box, you're going to get to learn about how to use the product and discover features. And then you'll be able to, uh, as a developer, you'll be able to quickly access your developer box by pinning it to your Windows task view as well. Okay, so uh, let's move on to some of the enterprise management updates now. Um, so Microsoft DevBox is going to aim, aims to deliver centralized governance based on organizational standards for security, compliance, and cost controls. 
during this period, uh, Microsoft are reducing the time it takes enterprises to get started with DevBox by making it easier to set it up uh, for a proof of concept by POC uh, and then move it to production. Um, they're also improving the, the monitoring, cost control, and security and privacy capabilities as well. So first of all, we have streamlined and flexible onboarding for enterprises. So uh, the, first of all, we've got the firewall service tag. So as an IT admin working on sort of setting up DevBox for your organization, you're going to be able to quickly configure traffic roles by utilizing the service tags in the firewall setup. Then we have guest accounts. So as a dev center admin, you're going to be able to securely onboard and support external teams and contractors uh, to your DevBox service. Let's talk a little bit about the enhanced monitoring and control cost capabilities that are coming up. Um, so first of all, DevBox logs as a Dev Center admin, uh, you're going to be able to access user level um, engagement metrics and connectivity related metrics. Uh, we've only got the Azure monitor agent or the AMA scoping. So as a Dev Center admin, again, you'll be able to focus your monitoring solely on DevBox devices. And this is going to simplify monitoring and reduce costs as well. There's also the hibernation on this case, it's currently in preview at the, the time of this video. Um, so as a DevCenter admin, it's going to reduce costs um, of compute by enabling dev boxes to hibernate on disconnect based on sort of active working hours uh, for developers. <clears throat> so let's continue on this enterprise management, um, sort of uh, updates on the roadmap. So we've got the security and privacy. So first of all, uh, customer managed keys. Um, so as a dev center admin, you're going to have great control over your data encryption by managing your own encryption keys. We've got PIM as well, so uh, privilege identity management. Again, as a dev center admin, uh, you'll be able to uh, use just-in-time admin access to, to for project configurations. And finally, developer offboarding. We've already spoken about onboarding, but offboarding again as a dev center admin, you're going to, have to configure your your sort of DevBox service to offload users from dev boxes when they leave the organization or switch switch between teams. Okay, let's talk about the fundamental performance and reliability now, and this is sort of the last subtopic of the of the roadmap. So first, we've got the seamless and, and reliable connectivity. Um, so Microsoft DevBox aims to provide a like a, it's like a like local, as they call it, developer experience that is 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 as responsive and seamless as working on a local machine. Microsoft are continually enhancing the reliability, speed, and performance of DevBox by optimizing everything from your sort of favorite Visual Studio deployment. And development to Windows, RDP, and the location of your dev boxes. So first, got that seamless sort of uh, reliable connectivity. So let's talk about single sign-on first. So as a developer, you're no longer going to need to provide your signing credentials every time you access your dev box, which is I'm sure news, good news for developers. Um, they've got the simple uh, multiple independent uh, links evaluation switching or smiles. So again, uh, as a dev. Um, you, you you won't get any in, you're going to get an uninterrupted reliable dev box connections and this is automatically switching to backup links as needed without disconnecting your sort of active session then you've got the Azure region optimization based on the user's location so again as a developer you're going to be able to easily create a new dev box in an optimal region based on your location um, and as a dev center admin you can be able to optimize the location of, exist of existing dev boxes based on end user location and available capacity then we've got Virtual Studio 2022 and Visual Studio uh, Code RDP. I think that should be Visual Studio 2022, so sorry for the typo there. Uh, as a developer, you can type and navigate your code without any sort of notice, noticeable latency. Uh, so this is the final few points around the roadmap, especially the fundamental performance reliability. Let's talk a little bit about service health and reliability. So we've got backup SKUs first of all. So as a dev center admin, you're going to be able to have the option to select different backup SKUs to be automatically utilized uh, to avoid interruptions during any service outages. You've also got self-service snapshot and restore. So this is for devs. You know, you're going to be able to recover your dev box by restoring it to a previous snapshot. And finally, outage notifications. So developers and admins are going to be able to stay informed about ongoing service outages via outage notification shared within developer and Azure, Azure portals as well. Uh, so that is it for this part. This is that's it for DevBox. That is the done topic now in this Microsoft Cloud VDI series. Um, with twelve episodes, I, I was I thought it might be like eight to ten, but we've obviously covered a bit more, which is great. Um, hopefully, you've you've, you've learned a bit about DevBox. You've enjoyed it, and you, 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 as well as me doing the demo, you've done it yourself. You've started provisioning it and having a bit of a play with it. It's a great service, quite fun to provision. So I strongly suggest you do that. Um, make sure you are um, subscribed if you're not. Make sure you, you know, I've got some useful links in, in below as well. 
um, and drop me a comment or you know like or you know, you know my, my socials below as well in the description so make sure you you connect with me on linkedin or twitter um, so thank you everybody for watching and the next episode is going to be around windows 365 so until next time goodbye